This is Bishop Dale Bronner, and I want to welcome you to a special presentation of the seven last words of Christ. These are the seven statements that Jesus Christ made while he was on the cross, dying for you and for me. I've got seven different of our ministers that's going to impart and illuminate one of the seven last statements of Jesus Christ. Won't you open your heart and celebrate as we learn more about Jesus' statements that he made for us as we celebrate this Passion Week. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to share with you concerning the fifth utterance of Christ from the cross. I am Reverend Dr. Freddie James, and our scripture lesson for today is John 19 and 28, which reads, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And the title of this sermon is simply, I thirst. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to share your right and true word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Help us to receive your instruction today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now in the text, Jesus is dying on the cross. He has been hanging on the cross now for about six hours in the fierce heat, and he had suffered the loss of a large amount of blood from being flogged with the leather whip and from the wounds in his hands, his feet, and his head. The sun is beating down on him on a cloudless Middle Eastern day before the unusual noontime darkness, where Luke says in 2345 that the sun's light failed. As Jesus hangs on the cross, the weight of his body pulls down on his diaphragm, and the air moves into his lungs and remains there, and he is in excruciating pain. Jesus must push up on his nail feet, causing more pain to exhale. In order to speak, air must pass over the vocal cords during exhalation. The gospel note that Jesus spoke seven times from the cross. It is amazing that despite his pain, he pushes up to speak for the fifth time and he says, I thirst. While few can actually identify with the horrible death Christ suffered on the cross, it is true that everyone knows what it feels like to be thirsty. Literally, thirst is the sensation or wanting or needing something to drink. Thirst is one of the most unpleasant, uncomfortable, and if left unsatisfied, fatal of human conditions. Because Christ was slowly and painfully dying, why did he expend the energy he had left to speak that he was thirsty. Now the Apostle John links John's statement, I thirst, to the fulfillment of scripture. There were, in fact, at least 20 Old Testament prophecies fulfilled during the 24 hours surrounding the Lord's death. By highlighting how Old Testament scriptures were fulfilled throughout Jesus' crucifixion, John showed that everything was happening according to God's plan. When Jesus said, I thirst from the cross, he was alluding to a prophecy in Psalms 22 and 15, which says, my strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. In response to Jesus' request for something to drink, the soldiers offer him wine vinegar. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked the sponge in it put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips, John 19 and 29. Now, wine vinegar was the cheapest and easiest wine for soldiers to acquire. It was probably diluted with water. Earlier, Jesus refused to drink of vinegar, gall, and myrrh offered to him to relieve his suffering. After that, the soldiers mockingly offered him wine vinegar, but did not allow him to drink. But here, several hours later, Jesus states, I am thirsty, thus asking for a drink. This time, the soldiers gave him some. This action was a fulfillment of Psalm 69 and 21. 
they put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. But what does it mean to us as the people of God that Christ said from the cross, I thirst? Recall that Jesus talked a lot about being thirsty, such as when he spoke to the woman at the well. If you remember that story, Jesus asked the woman to give him a drink. The woman responded, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jesus asked, answered, if you knew who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. Their conversation continued, but Jesus, through this illustration, demonstrated to the woman her own need, her own thirst, if you will, for something more than water. She was in need of a savior, but Jesus used a physical sign to help the woman recognize her own need. It's interesting to me that when Jesus asked the Samaritan woman to give him a drink, he used the same word for thirst in the Greek as he spoke from the cross. I thirst. Now we could hear these words from the cross as Jesus finally showing us his human side. We could interpret these words simply as a part of the humanity of Jesus. After all, he is suffering a physical death and experiencing all of the pains that go with it. And he is simply thirsty. And we can read this out because this is coming from the same man who remained silent from his tr through his trial, silent through the beatings, silent through the last few days of mind boggling torture. And perhaps he has finally had enough of the silence, lets his guard down and shows that he is human like the rest of us. Why not? But I believe that Jesus, though physically suffering, was not talking only about physical thirst. Look at the verse from the Gospel of John. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. Right now, it's the phrase directly before those words that I want to focus on. And Jesus, seeing that all things were now fulfilled, and in order to make perfect the scripture, said, I thirst. Do you see this? All things were complete. In other words, his mission on earth was now fulfilled. The work he had to do on earth is now finished. And if we look back on Psalm 22 and Psalm 69, we can even make a connection to the scriptures that Jesus is referencing in that phrase. But I believe that Jesus, always the teacher, always the one to point the way, always the one to help us recognize our own needs and the needs of others had an additional purpose for choosing those words. I believe that Jesus was given one final reminder, one final plea from the cross for us to recognize what his mission was all about. I believe Jesus was giving us one last word, one last way to recognize our own need for a savior, one last way to recognize that we all are truly thirsty. You see, we humans have a way of thinking that we don't really have any needs, or at least needs that anyone else or should help us with. We are raised to be confident in our own abilities, self-assured. We can do it on our own. And we're socialized to think that if we do have needs or do not help or do not need help from someone else, that we are weak or lazy or incompetent. It's the philosophy behind the American dream, isn't it? If you work hard enough, if you have enough drive, you can have anything. We have become in our own, we have become our own gods. Jesus, in those two words, just as with the woman at the well, directs us to think about our need for a savior, for our own thirst for living water. And not only do we need to recognize our own thirst, we need help to see those around us who are thirsty. Who among us, if we were at the foot of the cross that afternoon and heard our Lord and Savior say he was thirsty, wouldn't rush over to Jesus to give him a drink? It would be the greatest honor, wouldn't it? What a privilege to help our Lord when he was in need by giving him a drink to soothe his parched throat and lessen some of the agonizing pain he must have been in. Yet Christ tells us that we have the opportunity to serve him that drink every day. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells us of the last judgment 
when the king will say to the righteous, come, you that are blessed by the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. But the righteous answered, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or naked or sick or in prison? And the Lord answered them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are in my family, you did it to me. So Jesus tells us we have the opportunity every day to care for him in the way in which we care for each other. Yet we walk by people every day who are thirsty. We walk by people every day who are hungry and sick and naked and in prison and helpless and hopeless. Have we missed seeing Christ in them? Have we forgotten that when what we do unto the least of these, we do unto him? Now, I'm not casting judgment here because I do it myself. What's more, I can be even in the middle of doing my God stuff and still miss the message. I can be in my car with the stereo blasting and the windows shaking because the gospel music is so loud. I'm rocking and I'm praising and I'm thanking God for everything. And I'm driving right by homeless people who are on the street. I'm riding right by the hospital and the prison and the unwed, unwed mother shelter and the soup kitchen. And that's why this message from the cross is so beautiful. Now there is no condemnation, there's no judgment. There is no shaking of the head in disgust, even though Christ knew we would fail at this over and over again. In the beauty of that last moment, and out of the depths of his own physical suffering, when all his work on earth was done, there comes one simple plea from the cross, I thirst. And it comes to us today from the least of these, from the welfare mother, from the victim of abuse, from the sick, from the oppressed, from the disabled, from the victims of war and famine and poverty. Jesus is softly saying, don't forget, all those I have created are all around you. All those are in my family and are part of your family. There are people out there who need your help. From the mouth of the man who spent his life and ministry as a servant comes one final plea for us to love and serve others. Don't forget, there are people who do need your money. Don't forget, there are people out there who need your time or your skill or your friendship or your ear or your presence or simply your love. Those of you who are hunger and thirsting for righteousness yourselves, reach out. I thirst. God bless you and amen.